back to the show and I'm joined with Franco Prio from Fresh Air Carpet Cleaning. How are you, Franco? I'm well, thank you. Well, we, we were off air and we were actually talking about different businesses and their guarantees and are they, are they worth the paper they're written on? <laughs> And I said, yeah. thank you. And he started laughing because, well, welcome to the carpet industry. You've got to be careful. Oh, God, yeah. You really do need to be careful about who you're letting into your home. I mean, after all, it is your private domain uh, mm. and you've got stuff there that is valuable to you and you don't necessarily want any Tom, Dick or Harry coming in. Mm. You they can supply you all the guarantees in the world and all the rest of it, but it really does depend on the person themselves as to how honest they are. Yeah, um, and how they're going to portray that through their own business. Um, I mean, the, the, for me, if I'm going to have someone come in my house, I want to know that they're trustworthy. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, you can't be keeping an eye on them all the time. No. Um, and uh, you know, there are, have been instances I knew of one particular person who shall remain nameless, but um, uh, his 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 father. He actually told me about this. His father was a carpet cleaner. And he was as crooked as they came. He used to go in there to actually check out the house and then come back for, for a visit later. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's really important yeah. that, yes, I mean, this guy was saying, oh, yeah, I can clean your carpets and I can do this for you. Yeah, and he was uh, uh, and <laughs> less than ordinary on his, his clean side of it. And then, of course, yeah. he, he was doing the double dip. Wow. Yeah. When you when you get someone in like a carpet, I suppose it's any trades. There's probably some good advice for any trades you're going to get yes. in now. What are the things that you insist on yourself and what do you supply with your business? Okay, and number one is an insurance. If you don't have a public liability insurance, that person shouldn't be in your home. Because if anything does go wrong, and I mean, sometimes accidents do happen. True. Okay, yeah. um, and you'll find that it might be some sort of damage or there's something unexpected has cropped up. That's what your insurance is there for. Yeah. And if you don't have a current public liability insurance, you shouldn't be trading. So once again, if you've got someone coming in your home, they, you should know that they have got their, those insurances there. Mm. Another thing which is really good is a police clearance, okay? Because that I find that is really important to know that yeah. that person has not got some sort of criminal history before they're being led in the front door of your house. Yeah. Um, so they should be able to supply you with those sorts of details. Um, a certificate of currency is something that I have to give all of my clients, my mm. commercial clients in particular, and also police clearances for both myself and the staff. Yeah, I know my daughter's a, a school teacher and they've got police clearances and they've got working with children clearances Correct. and they've got all these things going on there. She yeah. said it's so important. When you look at someone's guarantee, because I guess we go, okay, you've got these clearances, but you've got the machine from Bunnings. <laughs> oh, wherever you've hired it. Um, but when you have a look at somebody's guarantee, what are some of the pointers that we should actually check for? Because some of them, are, well, one, they're written so tiny, sometimes you can't read them. Yeah. But what are some of the important things you should be looking for? Okay, there should be a period of time that they will come back willingly to look at spots. I mean, look, sometimes okay. they, there are things that you might have missed, mm. uh, or sometimes I have found in the past, it's uh, has happened to me, there's been like a little bit of mascara sitting at the bottom of the pile, and you don't know about it. You'll vacuum the carpet because it's slightly oily. It's stuck in the bottom of the pile. You'll clean it. You won't see it. But as the carpet dries out, of course, all the moisture is wicking up to the, to the atmosphere and it comes up and all of a sudden you'll have a little bloom on the carpet that wasn't there when you left. Yeah. So that the okay. capillary reaction draws it up. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So mm. it'll, it'll come up and it'll show itself mm. after the fact. So what you really need to do then is to be able to say, look, okay, we'll come back in and resolve that issue. Yeah. You know, whether it be a, a two week or a four week period, uh, something along those lines so that people know that you will actually come back. And if there is a problem that you will honour your guarantee of being able to remove spots and spills and stains that might have happened during the you know the, the, the course of the, the last 12, 18 months, wherever it was since the last clean. Yes. I know we when we built, we had the kitchen cabinetry done and the, the cabinet makers were, were brilliant. They said, you know, if the doors move, and they do, you know, houses settle and some people get really upset, but it's like if the house settles, there's not much a cabinet maker can do. The doors are going to move. Yeah. But they came back. They sent the young guy out and just readjusted, retightened, and went, there you go, all fixed. Yeah. But it wasn't something that they could do on the day. No, that's right. But they, like yourself, you understand what's going to happen. Yeah. So they've already prepped for it and go, yeah, that's common. We'll yeah. just pop back out and fix it. And it's good to that knowledge. And I suppose if you haven't been to like the association and you're not mixing with the right people like yourself or done proper training, you, you may end up arguing with the client and saying, well, it was clean when I left. Mm-hmm. Because you wouldn't understand yep. 
what's actually happening. That, well, that's right, and the, the, you need to understand that there are those sorts of situations that, that can happen. It's not very mm. often that it will happen, but from time to time. And yeah. I had another classic example of that with a, a person who had, uh, uh, her, her daughter had come home and sprinkled all this coloured sand from preschool <laughs> all over the carpet and, not, uh, and didn't tell me about it. Of course, I've done yeah. the carpet. And I went off to the next room and started doing that and went to the next room and then came back to that room and just glanced to make sure everything was all right. Then there was all these coloured dots coming up everywhere. <laughs> so I quickly dove onto it and dealt with it right there yeah. there on the spot. Um, but yeah, I mean, she wasn't aware that that was going to happen. Obviously, mm. neither was I. All I knew was there was a bit of sand in the carpet. I could hear it yeah. coming out. But uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting the dye stuff to come with it as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, carpets to me are really valuable, but one thing that interested me, and I think this is why rather than rip the carpets out and put hard flooring down, I was talking to uh, someone who specialises in this area with asthmas and allergies, and they're saying carpets are great because carpets will actually trap those dust fibres where hard floor won't. So asthma right. suffers, it's better to have the carpet and then invest the money in once a year, whenever it is, get them professionally clean because they actually do track those yes. dust and actually help with the health of the person in the house. Absolutely, absolutely. Look, that, 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 all that research that had been around saying that carpets were the, the, the absolute doom for anybody with, a, yeah. with asthma, that was unfortunately sponsored by a hard floor <laughs> supply company in I'm Sweden. I'm shocked, Franco. And they, they, they paid for their results. So this has all yeah. come to the fore in the last few years. Yeah. Uh, and no one really double-checked it. They just took that as being the gospel. Because it kind of makes sense. You yeah. Know, oh, yeah, it's fibres. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. But then further testing has been done, and some of it was actually done by uh, the uh, Department of Environmental Science here at Murdoch University. Mm. Uh, and one of the things they found is that with carpets, because it is a fibrous matter, it's a great filtration device. Mm. So the dust that gets into it tends to sit there. It traps it. It traps it, that's correct. So you can walk across the carpet and a little bit might come up, but if you have that same amount of dust on a hard floor, you walk through it and it swirls around and up into the atmosphere, uh, and yeah. then it really can adversely affect the health of someone who is asthmatic. So for asthma sufferers, carpet is actually a better option Yeah. as long as it is vacuumed with a HEPA filter. If you don't vacuum it, yeah. it's still going to be the same problem. Mm. Okay, But if you maintain it correctly, for a person with, a, with an asthma, um, it is a better way to go. I, I had one particular customer a few years back mm. whose son was a chronic asthmatic and he had the, probably the worst case of asthma you'd, you'd want to know about. And when he had an attack, he went to his carpeted bedroom because it's the only place he would recover. Anything else wow. would set him right off again. Is so, there any particular fibres in carpet that are better for asthma? Synthetics. Okay. Is it okay. really? Well, the, the, the thing with wool is, mm. uh, it, wool's all short, little lengths. It's called staple fibre, so they're small lengths. Right. Okay? And those are spun into a yarn and they're bound together by friction. But over time, you get a little bit of breakdown. Some of it does come off. So everybody's quite familiar with wool carpets having the wool dust. Mm. Any of that's going to be an irritant that can enter the respiratory system and can potentially trigger an asthma attack. Mm. With your synthetics, on the other hand, they're one continuous filament. Okay, right. so even if they're a tuft of carpet, yes, they're, 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 uh, they, they might be cut into the lengths of the tufts, yeah. but it's one length going right through to the back of the carpet and they're trapped in there, they're glued in there. So they don't tend to come free very right. easily. A wool carpet will. And the synthetics can still, still trap the dust just as effective. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, you, you'll find that some carpets are even better than others when it comes to that. But then again, they, the more they trap, the harder they become to clean. So it's a trade-off. Yeah. So yeah, but the synthetic carpets, certainly if you do have any sort of allergy, are the better way to go. Mm. Yeah, I, I just wanted to make that point because I was actually talking to a lady who actually specialises in that area. Right. And I was saying you were coming on. She goes, well, <laughs> use carpets. You start, you were asking me, she said, Franco will tell you that carpets are the best for asthma sufferers. And no, she doesn't work for carpet companies. No, or, no I think I know. Uh, you're talking about hard floor, yeah, and it's Jacqueline, and yes, she's, yeah, she's yeah. a really big one. She says, as soon as she finds someone with allergies, she goes, Okay, let's get them. But she also recommends that, even though we've got good vacuum cleaners at home, they're nowhere near as good as what your equipment That's right. would yeah. be. Yeah, well, said, we will get rid of those organic contaminants, which yeah. your vacuum cleaner can't reach. Mm. Okay, so you'll have, uh, I mean, most of the soils that you get, the, the, what you see is, is visible, they're oily soils. So right. of course, oily equals sticky. They stick and they bond. It's called oil bonding onto yeah. the fiber. Yep. And that's where we need some sort of chemistry to mm. break those bonds. Just steam alone will not do it. 
So people who think that they're steaming the carpets, they're cleaning the carpets, they're not. Right. Okay. They might be making a visual impression, but they're not actually cleaning. We need something to break those oils down, mm. release them from the fibres and get flushed off. Fantastic. Someone, just as a matter of interest, someone who, because I know there's a lot of asthma sufferers, you know, and I know a lot in, in our families. What's the recommended time frame to have your carpets professionally? I know they can maintain them yes. with, with your vacuum cleaners, but what's, what would you say? Okay, it really depends on how they get used. The general right. rule of thumb, which the manufacturers will tell you, is 12 to 18 months. Right. Okay, but once again, it depends on how the carpet gets used. Mm. Um, okay, so for instance, if you had an Asian family who do a lot of uh, stir fry cooking, it yep. gets a lot of oil set on the carpet. So they'll need it sooner. Okay, right. then, then, uh, then, then say that our traditional cooking methods where we might have an oven or we might steam mm. stuff and things like that. That's so there are less oils flapping around the atmosphere. Yeah. Um, so that there, you need to pay attention to that. Or it could be that they're in a city environment with a lot of air pollution from traffic and wow. what have you. So they, once again, have more oils that can be deposited in a restaurant. Or if you live near a restaurant, even a Hungry Jack's or things like that, you know, you'll have oils in the atmosphere being generated right. by those cooking fumes and they can enter your house as well. Wow. So you'll have an impact from that. Okay, so it, 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 it does vary quite greatly, but the general rule of thumb is 12 to 18 months. There we are. We always learn something when you come on the show. Yes, that's the <laughs> idea of my being here. Yeah, so look, if you've got tiles and you need all your grating cleaned, and look, if you've got porcelain tiles and you're like me, didn't actually realise they're porcelain or porous and need to protect them, give Franco a call. What's the best number, Franco, to give you a call? Okay, to be able to get me is 0418 914097. Email address, it's another really good way to get me, which is info at f acc.com.au and uh, you can send me a, an email through there or even just look at our Fresh Air Carpet Cleaning Facebook page or find me through the website. There's a contact form on there as well. Fantastic. Once again, thanks very much, Franco. No problem. Thank you. Mike.